G'day. Today we're doing a bit of work on a Holden Cruise. 11th month 2010, 2 litre turbo diesel uh, Holden Cruise with the 6T40 transmission in it. So we'll just see if we've got any fault codes with it. 246,000. And there we go, we've got uh, pressure control solenoid valve 4 stuck off. And the other one's a parking sensor, high voltage. So quite often when you get multiple fault codes like that, you want to check your battery, make sure it's fully charged and strong. And that means low internal resistance in the battery. In drive, it's slipping in second and sixth gear. If we manually jump second gear and don't let it go into sixth gear, no worries, it won't go into limp mode. But if you put it in drive or try second and sixth manually, it'll slip, you'll see in a moment. So we'll, we'll go in drive first, and here we go. We're going, taking off. And that's slipping in and we've jumped second we're in third now fourth fifth and now if it goes in the sixth which will it just start slipping Okay, now we're going to take off manually, manual first, taking off, going into second, slipping, third, yep, it's gone into third now, fourth, we're going to be doing over 60 to get into fifth. There we go, fifth. So I can toggle it fourth, third, fourth, fifth. No worries. If I jump second, it won't go in the limp mode. It still hasn't gone in the limp mode. And if we go a little bit faster. At 95 k's. I'll just toggle it into top gear or sixth and it'll just slip. See the revs going up to nearly 4,000 revs. I can't see the scan tool but I can see it on the taco. So we've definitely got a solenoid issue or a pressure leak somewhere in that in that circuit, second and sixth. All right, so we'll take off again. We're in first manual, manual first. In the second, so it's still slipping. Okay, if I toggle it into third, it'll go into third. So slipping in second and top gear. And here we've got how to identify whether you've got a Gen 1 or Gen 2 6T40 or 6T45. The eighth digit will either be 123 or BCD. And ours is a Gen 1. And you can see the TCM up here. And which solenoids do what. We've got a problem with second and sixth. So fresh control solenoid 4. We've got 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4ths alright, but PCS5 and PCF4 are operating in common gears. As same as PCS3, which is 1st and reverse, and 4th, 5th and 6th. More than likely we've got a problem with pressure control solenoid 4, but 
in these sort of issues the solenoids all work you know as much as one another good idea to either replace as many as you can or the whole set and just for reference there's the gen 2 another thing the solenoids are actually different different colored coated they might be stained so they might not actually be green or yellow but yeah you'll still be able to work it out and these are the little pressure switches which operate in each of those respective gears and you'll notice that they're not in order you got p pressure switch one pressure switch two pressure switch three and number four is way over this side and they will sometimes get contaminated and bridge out with that fine metallic debris another issue is a lot of these earth straps on these they're bolted to paint so the only connection you've got on the earth straps are through the thread of the bolt so quite often people steam clean them or over a period of time the thread oxidizes and you don't get a good connection to complete a good electrical circuit with a good earth good idea to uh, pull off as many as you can and just spray a bit of WD-40 dielectric grease or sometimes doing it up and undoing it a few times will improve the connection there another thing you can do is just measure with an ohm meter across the cable or on the body and on the cable just to confirm that you have improved the the connection now the 6T40 transmissions they have a filter but you've got to pull the transmission apart to get to it so on these it's basically an oil change good idea to add a neodymium magnet to the drain plug the drain plug is very small and what we're going to do on this one is we're going to pull the front cover off and have a look at the solenoids we need to remove some of the obstruction there there's a front cover on the on the front of the transmission just so we've got better access to it and we might have to take this battery out take that cover off and before we've started any work we've actually given it a pressure wash we'll pull the front out first i'll lift it up then pull the front out that's it all right so we've taken that air hose there uh, what is that one from the air box to here off uh, we'll probably take this intercooler hose here off take the cover off the battery box and whiz these off as well they just slide down you don't want to force it it should just come out by itself like that and the bottom one And this little bolt here just so you can get it out there's another plug here on the battery box so this clip on the battery box there you can see clip you push that down and then you can slide that lock out you got to pull that lock out a little bit we'll pull this plug out this loom sort of in the way and over here it's actually plugged into the front of that transmission cover under there a little bit hard to see just see where my finger is now to get the plug off under this bit here there's two little locking pins there you shove it under here and you just sort of carefully just sort of flex it there you go pops off and you just slide that all the way over there we go and that plug will just wriggle out just a little bit awkward with the camera there there you go remove the brackets that are holding the cooling line that passes right along there and we've got that other cooling line at the back of the transmission there 13 mil nut on it as well there we go we've got those cooling lines we're just gonna wire them up towards the front so we can get access to that cover 
Another thing you can do on these, you can either take the radiator out for more access, but you still won't get a lot more access, um, is take this, the bolts off the engine mount and just flex the whole motor transaxle back a bit and that'll give you a little bit more room at the front here. And we've got the drain plug there, just here behind the axle on the left hand side of the transmission is the level plug and you also have the filler plug up on the breather hose up on top of the transmission it's a little bit easier than filling it through that hole there you can see the oil's pretty pretty black in it these drain plugs and the level plug on the side there they're on a tapered thread so don't over tighten it don't keep doing it up until you bottom it out or you'll end up sometimes you can crack the case there if it's on a tapered thread that hose off that intercooler and you can see you can actually put your hand through here and work top and bottom doesn't look like there's a lot of room but there's enough room there so now we'll just whiz off all these and I think they're 8 mil there's quite a few bolts on that front cover. Make sure it's all nice and clean before you even start. Okay we've got all the bolts off the cover and you can see it's already separated there and we need to actually push it that way because you've got that electrical plug there. Just wriggle that off and maneuver it out through the top. Now you have to sort of rotate that cover to get it out up the top and flex this hose if you prefer you can remove that radiator hose before you've even started and there it is there probably need to just wire those cooling lines out of the way a bit and now we can remove that that little unit there where the solenoids are and they're along the right hand side of the on the driver's side or right hand side of the vehicle now on this plug here we've got the little locking pin, remove that pin and then you can press that clip and just pull that plug out and this one you just flex that, just support your finger just so you don't, when it does go you don't break it off sometimes these plastics are quite brittle and there's a little lock press that little clip there and that just wriggles off and this one as well, we've got to flex that. And there's another one just there. Got to take that plug off. And we just take those bolts off. And here we are on the Sonax website, Sonax, S O N A X dot com. And it shows you which bolts to take off to get the valve body off. And here we've got the torque settings. So Sonax has a lot of free information on there. Definitely worth looking that website up and searching your transmission. Rightio, you can take it out. You right? Yeah, just support it. Just yeah, I'm supporting the bottom. Got it. Supporting the bottom? Yeah. Don't think we can take it through the bottom, just take it up. You right? Yeah. Now this here, this little bit here is the fluid level sensor. We're still on the Sonax website, sonax.com. You can see the solenoid and clutch application chart. And here we have a diagram of all the solenoid positions. Now just at the bottom there you'll see that the the ohms test is checked at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is approximately 22 degrees Celsius room temperature. But bear in mind that as solenoids warm up, the resistance goes up as well. So if you're testing at higher temperatures, the resistance will be at the higher end of the scale anyway. So at 22 degrees Celsius, it should be between three and five ohms. There we go, we're gonna replace this filter 
because what happens the little rubber seals that go around those channels they flatten out and we're going to replace it with a full solenoid set we've got solenoid 4 playing up which is second and sixth gear and it's stuck off but with jobs like this usually all the solenoids get contaminated especially if they're under serviced Torx plus 10 we'll take this plate off just so we can get this little plastic bit off the solenoids so we can slide them out loosen bolts and under here you can see all these little pressure switches there have to just come off off that plastic bit so you just need to work it off slightly like that can use a screwdriver you, you also want to be very careful not to get any static on this ideally you want to use a anti-static wristband there we go now here you've got all these little pressure switches you, you don't want to bend them too much or they'll get lo too loose in there and sometimes these rivets loosen up what you can do is just put a punch in your vise underneath and just give it a little tap on top that'll improve the the connection there these o-rings here as well you replace them filter On there probably stuck on that rubber good idea to replace that there we go wiggle that off like I said the little rubber on the filter flattens out we're going to put a new one on and now you've probably already worked it out these little plates here you need to pull them out to be able to slide the solenoids out anyway once you get those plates out it's just a matter of just wriggling that solenoid out like that And here we've got the solenoid that's in question. Nothing there. Bugger all amps going. And I test them at 10.5 volts because a car battery is considered flat when it's at 10.5 volts. So if the solenoid's working at, at that voltage, it's generally okay, definitely okay over 12 volts. There's one of the black ones. And you can hear that actually working. Yeah, you can see it's working as it should. And here we've got one of the other yellow ones. And if you have a look through that little port there, a little bit hard to see there. 
you can just see that little valve moving you can see that a slight movement there and that one's working okay you can see it's actually got a what's that 2.3 amps draw there at that setting solenoid housing nice and clean make sure it's you, you got the right ones because once you open these difficult to return them and it's just a matter of sliding them back in now I've got the the filter side up and we start off with a black one and they've got these little locating sections on on there if you can see that and that just slots into that square there just wriggle it in carefully like that so we've got a black one yellow one black one oh sorry black yellow yellow then the on off so we can put the black one in here there we go clips in a bit better the other black one it's on the end there it's going in a little bit harder there we go and you want to turn it as you're pushing it in you don't want to cut that seal or damage the o-rings Yellow, yellow, there we go. It's always, if you're in doubt, it's always better to pull it out now than pull it out after you've done the whole job. Yellow. And finally the, the on-off one. Looks a bit slightly different. Seals are sometimes very tight in there. That's what you want. You want it sealing properly. Just line them up as straight as you can. New filter. And like I mentioned earlier, what happens these little rubber seals, they flatten out. A little bit hard to see. They have flattened out when you compare it to the new one. That's raised there. If you just run your finger on there, you'll see that. It does go on pretty tight. There we go. Okay. I can flip it over and don't forget to put these in they just hold the solenoid from being pushed out when there's pressure on it Now we've got the part that goes onto that. You've got the TCM. If you replace this, you, most of the time you need to get it reflashed at the dealerships. 
you also want to just check these this is where the because these don't have wiring they have what's called a conductor plate go rings also replaced and that slides onto that and as you're putting it together you've got to just squeeze it slowly so it pushes on evenly I'll do that like this just so these little plates don't fall out and we just slowly and evenly press it down and now we've got that plate that we took off before Yeah, because it's, it's going into plastic you don't want to do it with your tech gun or you can damage and before I tighten it up I'm just going to check that all those bolt holes are aligned before I tighten it up okay and that's ready to put back on you can give, give the solenoids a little bit of a wriggle just to make sure it's located nicely on those pins. The Tecum seal, that's that one there, it's sealing on the case. Before we put it in, we're just going to check this stand pipe. You just pull that out like that, wriggle it out. And there we have the standpipe information. We're on the Atra bulletin. And you can see how to check the fluid level. You need to get it to operating temperature when you check it. Now as well as the plug there, you'll see that down here there's like a little spring steel uh, plate. And that actually rests on the pan and keeps that pressed into the case there. If you have a look into the case, there'll be like a little section there with two little um, recesses for those two pins on it. So when you have it all apart like that, it does feel like it's broken or it's loose. That's nothing to worry about. Back on the Sonax website, good idea before we put that solenoid housing back on, just to nip up those bolts as well if you haven't removed it 97 inch pound and then when we put that solenoid housing on you can see the green and the red the green are on 106 inch pound and the red ones on the TCM 71 inch pound and you can also see those switch positions that I showed you earlier. Output speed sensor, the one next to that is the range sensor. And then the one on the bottom is the input speed sensor. Okay, we've talked them all up, they're all nice and tight anyway. Stand pipe's in its position, you can feel it. And he's just lowering it in from the top. That's it, just hold it there for a sec. No, it hasn't located at the top end somewhere. You holding it? Yeah. yeah, I'm supporting it. Just where those pins are on that filter. Yeah, just hold it there. Yeah. Holding it? Yeah. I can't really see. Yeah, I'm going to have to put the camera down. I think you're too low. Hang on a sec. Hey? There we go. It's gone in there. All the bolts are on. Good idea to put them all on before you start talking it up. And talk them up to those specs that I just showed. Don't forget to push all the plugs in. Now 13 newton meter or 100 inch pound is pretty tight. You need to make sure you do 
them up quite evenly. And you don't jerk it while you're tensioning it. When you are tensioning them up, make sure you check it. Check them all two or three times. At a hundred inch pound, you'll find that that plastic uh, bends a little bit. So when you go over it, you'll see that they've loosened up on one side. Ideally, you want to do it in in stages, maybe 40 inch pound, uh, 75, and then 100, and that way the whole thing goes on evenly. Front covers nice and clean, got the old seal off, putting a new one on. So you look for these three, one, two, three, otherwise you end up twisting it around inside out. So we've replaced the one on the valve body that seals on there. New one on there, all tensioned up, make sure you push all the plugs in, your stand pipe's in, you can feel it that it's located in, remembering that the spring steel pushes it in off the pan. You need to flex that hose forward a bit. And be careful not to get any rubbish in there. And there we go. So there is a bit of a manoeuvring there, a bit of mucking around, but, but that can go in. That's why it's so important to clean it. Put all the bolts in first before you tighten it. Double checking and triple checking your work if it's a job that you're unfamiliar with as you go along. Now we've done a couple either side of it, just to press it up, and then you can tighten them all up. We have to put any, everything back on that's underneath, and now we've only got this stuff to put on at the top. Bit of dielectric grease. battery box back in don't forget the plug here on the front of the battery box there that little relay goes back on there Put the slots back in there in the battery box Now these plugs. It should just pull itself in, you don't force it in. So you've got that little arm there, a bit hard to see. And then it just slowly pulls its way in until you hear the lock. And there's one underneath there too. But if you got this far, it means you've got it off anyway. Battery. Yep. Very good, right?
Mark me. Okay. Still went on here, didn't it? Yeah. What does that clip on to? Now to fill these, there's a little breather tube, you can see it comes out and up to here. You just wiggle that off or undo it left. Make sure it's nice and clean before you take it off. And there's a big opening hole there like that. And that's where we're going to fill it in there. And we'll probably need, because we've had the front cover off, uh, I think we need about probably six and a half litres. I think when they're completely dry, they're about eight and a half litres. But it's always best to, to check the fluid level as per the manufacturer's instructions. And we're putting in the Tritec full synthetic low viscosity fluid. You can check on their website. Rightio, we've got six and a half litres in. You can start it up. Go through the gears. Now we had to put that air hose on, or that air tube, kept stalling. Right, I start her up. Okay, let's go through the gears. Got feel. Yep. Just select the gears a few times. We can't remember if we cleared the codes before, but we've just double checked, cleared them all. Now we can take it for a test run. And here we go. Two. Three. Still a bit rough. Four. I'm just watching it on the taco. Five. 90Ks. to operating temperature which will take a little while but definitely not sit, slipping in second and sixth now so we'll just do a few stop starts try and warm it up okay back from a road test got no fault codes on it it's still readapting Second and six is actually, funnily enough, it's better than uh, it was before. But the, the TCM's probably learnt that it needed to back off the pressures in second and six, so it will continue to relearn 
probably up to a couple of hundred kilometres, but it's shifting through the gears all right. Make sure you get the oil level right. Ours was a little bit over full. You don't want to have it over full or under full. If it's over full, the spinning parts can aerate the oil and you can end up getting fluid coming out of the breather or any weak point on the transmission. So to check the fluid level, you need to have it on uh, the temperature on your scan tool between 85 and 95 degrees Celsius. With the motor running in park, go through the, all the gears on your T-bar probably two or three times, back in the park, handbrake on, and you just undo that little plug there on the side, 11 mil, and it should be trickling out. If, if you adjust it to the lower temperature mark, your oil level will run when it gets hotter at the higher level mark, if that makes sense. And if you measure it at a hotter temperature, like close to the 95, it'll operate at the lower level. So we like to put it in between 85 to 95, so you go the middle range mark, which will be 90 degrees. You can see, we just wipe this oil off that's come out of there put the cover back on and it will, like I said, continue to relearn or readapt as the driver probably drives it over the next couple of hundred k's. And it won't relearn until the transmission gets to operating temperature. So if they're doing short runs, it's not going to relearn. Anyway, I hope that helps. Sorry, such a long video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Any comments or suggestions, leave them in the section below. And throw us a beer if any of this information has helped. Much appreciated. Keeps us motivated to make more videos. Thank you for watching.